The TSA just banned peanut butter from flying on planes because they claim it's a liquid. Oh, really? You're telling me that this, this right here is a liquid? Yeah, I'm gonna press X to doubt that one. Today, I plan to not only prove them wrong on a basic scientific level, but I'm also planning to expose you to the conspiracy that's keeping this peanut buttery spread misclassified. Peanut butter is a literal deadly weapon that no one wants you to know about, and I'm not talking about allergies. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Food Theory, the only show that sticks to the roof of your mouth. Earlier this year, podcaster Patrick Neve made a viral tweet outlining his most recent interaction with the airport's baggage police. That's the TSA for any of my non-flying theorists. According to Mr. Neve, a jar of peanut butter that had been packed in his carry-on had been confiscated on the grounds that it was a liquid. As you might imagine, the Internet had themselves some strong feelings about that. But that didn't stop the TSA from clapping back with a viral tweet of their own. On March 21st, the TSA released this tweet declaring that everyone's favorite sandwich spread was, in fact, a liquid. No ifs, ands, or butters about it. This was no longer just a single interaction that someone had going through security, this was the official stance. Really curious if they ever stopped to try and drink peanut butter through a straw. Wonder how well that went for them. Now if you aren't sure why you or anyone else should care about this, let me catch you up. Currently, the TSA limits the amount of aerosols, creams, gels, pastes, and liquids that you can shove into your carry-on to no more than 3.4 ounces or 100 ml liters a bottle. This is what's known as the 311 rule. In case you're confused, the TSA even has a cute little video explaining it. True or false, peanut butter is not a liquid and can therefore be packed in your carry-on bag regardless of its size. The answer, false. Peanut butter is spreadable and therefore considered a liquid. Notice how they go out of their way to single out peanut butter, specifically this jar of Jif Extra Crunchy. Nope, not allowed. It's a liquid. I mean, if the TSA had tried to tell me that peanut butter was a paste or a gel and was thus banned from going on a plane, then yeah, sure. I and the wider internet collective would have probably let that one slide, but oh no, you had to call it a liquid. According to them, a liquid is anything that, quote, has no definite shape and takes a shape dictated by its container. If that's not opening us up to the king of all gray areas, then I don't know what is. Outside of the obvious next dominoes to fall, like Nutella and jelly, it also opens the door to some ridiculous extensions. Are mashed potatoes a liquid? I would say no, and yet they can be molded into the shape of the container. What if it's Taco Tuesday and I want to roll through airport security with my boys in a big old bowl of guac. Ice cream? Pudding? A nice soft cheese? What exactly does the TSA define as a gas here? Because the defining feature of a gas is its ability to expand and fill the container it's in. Do powders now count as liquids? Because they can fill their container. Is my spaghetti technically a liquid? Because the last time I checked, my noodles weren't happy sitting there in the form of a cube. This is further complicated by the fact that not everything we call peanut butter is actually peanut butter. The FDA requires that all products claiming to be peanut butter contain at least 90% peanut, otherwise they legally have to be called peanut spreads. So what if I roll into TSA with my 85% peanut sandwich mix? Some tells me that my argument that this is technically 5% under the qualifying limit of what defines peanut butter ain't gonna fly with Janet the checkpoint lady. Or on the other side, what if it's 95% peanut? At what point does my butter just become nut? By the way, we've actually done an episode all about this in relation to chocolate not being chocolate. If you haven't seen that one, make sure you check it out after this video, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button so you're always alerted whenever I find myself sorting out sticky food definitions. Anyway, I think I've made my point. Enough hypothetical questions, it's time for answers. Who here is right? The TSA or the angry mob of the internet? This channel knows science, this channel knows food, and this channel knows the mundane everyday questions that people need definitive answers to. So today, we're gonna get real familiar with peanut butter. Have your digital pitchforks ready because we're looking into whether or not peanut butter is a liquid. And uh, let's just say you're not gonna like the answers that we find. The first thing we need to do is define what exactly is a liquid. Hope you have those science textbooks ready, friendos, because it's time for a quick refresher on the states of matter. As most of you probably remember, there are four naturally occurring states of matter in our universe. Solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. It's unlikely that you're gonna be rolling up plasma to pack alongside your underwear and your suitcase, so let's just get that one out of the way. Plasma isn't very common here on Earth, but it's essentially highly charged particles that have even higher amounts of kinetic energy. Plasma makes up things that typically don't make it onto your vacation packing list. Stuff like stars, lightning bolts, neon signs. Stuff that you're probably choosing to leave at home because the added weight of it could just be used to pack an extra pair of shoes. Going from one end of the spectrum to the other, the particles of a solid are packed closely together, usually in regular patterns, and they're unable to slide past each other. Solids have a defined shape so they don't conform to that of their container the way that gases and, to a lesser extent, liquids do. Meanwhile, the particles in a gas lack any arrangement. They're so loosely packed, which allows them to 
not only flow freely, but to fill their container and be easily compressed. In between solids and gases are liquids, with particles that are more loosely packed than solids, but also more tightly packed than gases. Their particles are able to flow around each other as they lack any rigid arrangement, similar to a gas. But unlike a gas, they can only partially take the shape of their container since the particles don't float about freely. You hear that one, TSA? Only partially take the shape of their container. Partially. Seriously, if you don't fix your definition soon, you'll be able to confiscate the air out of my lungs. So what happens when a substance finds itself in the uncanny valley between two states? Like how peanut butter can be considered a liquid by some and a solid by others. Well, that's where semi-solids or quasi-solids come in. You see, a semi-solid is a substance with qualities that are both solid and liquid. They're technically solid, but they can conform to a shape when pressure is applied to them. You're probably most used to semi-solids in the form of medical applications, stuff like creams, gels, and ointments. And again, if the TSA had tried to tell me that peanut butter was banned for being a gel or a cream, I probably would have let that one slide. But they said liquid, so here we are. You only have yourselves to blame. So we know that the TSA views gels, creams, aerosols, pastes, and liquids separately. If they didn't, they would just label them all liquids. What we don't know, though, is how they're determining what is what. To answer that, we gotta get technical. Lucky for us, technical is my middle name. Matthew Technical Patrick. It was actually passed down to me by my father. According to the American Society for Testing and Materials, the organization responsible for setting standards like this worldwide, a liquid is a substance, or mixture of substances, capable of a visually detectable flow when held at temperatures of 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. They even have themselves a step-by-step -step guide on how to perform the experiment when you aren't sure what you're looking at. According to them, this experiment is almost identical to the one that was conducted by the U.S. Department of Transportation when the TSA was first created. So, like any good theorist, I decided to test this one myself. I assembled an array of different peanut butters, a peanut butter Avengers, if you will. Some were creamy, some were chunky, some were international. So with my peanut butters assembled, it was time to start testing. To do this, I collected samples from each jar and one by one heated them up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. Once they were up to temp, it was time to flip the table on these mother butters to see who was up for the challenge. If the peanut butter traveled less than 55 millimeters or two inches before three minutes was up, it's a solid. But if it travels more than this or a whole gram of it collects down in the catch tray, then the TSA is right and that peanut butter is a liquid. One after another, I tested the peanut butters and one after another, they all poured out. Proving that yes, in fact, based on the definition of a liquid from the American Society for Testing and Materials, peanut butter is a liquid. But there was one, dear theorists, that held firm. One that didn't run. One that proved the opposite, that peanut butter can be and is a solid. The one who stayed firm under the heat was Jif Extra Chunky Peanut Butter, which in probably the most ironic twist of them all is the one that the TSA specifically calls out and highlights in their little information video from earlier. The one peanut butter that is definitively and scientifically a solid is the one that they expressly label as a liquid. That right there, that is nutty, literally and figuratively. So why does the TSA's claim work for some but fall apart for others? How did crunchy peanut butter hold strong while others drop the peanut butter ball? My guess is that the added peanuts increased its stability, allowing the crunchy peanut butter to hold its shape and not bend to the will of gravity. That said, I suspect that you'll never win if you plan to argue that your jar of crunchy peanut butter is in fact a solid, even if you bust out the thermometers and measuring tape at the airport. And it has nothing to do with the fact that peanut butter is or is not a liquid. Do you want to know what the TSA really has against your jar of peanut butter? Well, believe it or not, but all of this probably has less to do with whether or not peanut butter is a liquid and more to do with what people are doing with their peanut butter. And I don't mean making sandwiches. Last December, security officers at John F. Kennedy International Airport found parts of a loaded handgun hidden inside two jars of Jif creamy peanut butter, all packed inside of someone's checked bag. Now, normally, you can have guns packed inside your checked bags, but not when they're loaded, and definitely not when they're concealed inside of peanut butter jars. This discovery made the TSA's top 10 finds for 2022, which, in case you're wondering, is in fact a real list, a list that also included a gun hidden inside of a raw chicken. The TSA labeled that one the Glockadoodle Don't. Just chef's kiss, A-plus comedy. The TSA, for as much as I'm giving them a hard time in this episode, actually has a fantastic sense of humor. I highly recommend their Instagram page. No joke, or actually a lot of jokes, it's very funny. And surprisingly, semi-automatic sandwich toppings might be the least of the TSA's worries. Did you know that peanut butter can explode? Kind of. Ask a TSA agent why you're not allowed to bring peanut butter on a plane, and you'll likely be reminded that the oil found in peanuts contains the chemical glycerin, a compound that's molecularly similar to the explosive nitroglycerin. The key difference is that the molecular arrangement of one leaves it delicious and the other deadly. Glycerin can, in fact, be used to make nitroglycerin, but let's be honest, no one's going to the airport bathroom to pull off that Walter White maneuver while waiting for their flight. They did, however, do that in World War II. You see, during the war, 68% of oil imports was cut off. This became a big problem for the war effort as these foreign oils were 
used to make glycerin, which was then turned into nitroglycerin and used to make explosives. Unfortunately, the glycerin content of oils found on the home front weren't as earth-shattering as those from afar, about 10% to their 14%. So in order to meet the demand, a program was launched to increase the production of oils, one of which being peanut across the United States. A total of 5 million acres were dedicated to the production of peanuts alone, and if that feels like overkill, just take a look at this World War II era poster stating in big bold letters, peanut oil will make dynamite. That doesn't explain why TSA agents start sweating when they see your jar of peanutty spread. I don't know what will. So there you have it, my friends. Some peanut butters are liquid, some of them are solid, some peanut butters aren't even peanut butters at all, and all of them are banned for reasons that have nothing to do with the state of matter it really is. And TSA, I know that I gave you a hard time throughout this episode. Let me just say, as a notoriously nervous flyer, thanks for keeping us safe, even if it means having to sacrifice a few PB&Js on the way. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. You know what is dynamite though? Our sponsor for today's video. Fetch, the ridiculously easy to use free app where you can earn free rewards on literally anything you buy. So if you had your entire stash of peanut butter confiscated by the TSA because, I don't know, you were traveling with a full carry-on of the stuff, you can go out, restock at the supermarket, snap a picture of the receipt, and start earning points that you can then redeem for hundreds of rewards, including gift cards to all your favorite retail stores. The whole process is super fast. You can snap receipts, redeem points, and spend the rewards all from the app on your phone in seconds. Doesn't even have to be a physical receipt. If you're a chronic online shopper like I am, seriously, it sometimes is a problem, you can use their e-receipt function. The app will automatically use the email and find rewards for you. So the next time you're gearing up for a trip and need things that will be able to get through TSA, use the points you get and turn them into rewards like gift cards for Whole Foods, Walmart, even Instacart, if you'd prefer your 3.4 ounces of creamy peanut butter delivered straight to you. And don't hesitate to snap any receipt you get. The points come from anywhere. Retail stores, restaurants, Amazon purchases, you name it, it is viable. All you have to do is click the link down in the description below and use the code FOODTHEORY, F-O-O-D-T-H-E-O-R-Y, or, you know, just scan the QR code that you see on screen right now, and you can get 100 points when you snap your first receipt so you can start saving instantly. Thank you again to Fetch for being the sponsor of today's video, and as always, thank you for watching today's video. I will see you next week.